Well, I, I should really like learn to hold my uh, tongue whenever I'm talking about games that have updates that come out that I don't like test fully because it, it honestly surprised me. I learned last night that apparently there were or are like two in one weapon trinkets, which kind of does worry me because then I'm just kind of like, hmm. If something like that does exist, then does that also apply to the 19 trinkets that, um, you know, they were talking about? Like, does that include the 19 new trinkets, the two-in-one trinkets? And also, I've discovered, like, there's a couple of new trinkets lying around the map. Um, if you go to Fist Hand Rock, or the map that has Frank in the Mornings, um... If you run across that path as normal, across the bridge, and you go to that, like, area that's hanging over the harbor, there's, like, a, a pillar of sorts, like a big giant umbrella. You'll hear the sound of a trinket lying around. And if you look up and you somehow manage to, like, double chump and use your, uh, your, your fucking slab that lets you teleport, or, God forbid, just jump off the fucking roof, you'll find a new trinket, and... It kind of comes into, like, an idea of, like, a mini what-if in terms of, like, a new trinket they can add into the game. But, um, this trinket is a weapon trinket. And what it does is the less weapons you have on you, you'll do more damage with the current weapon that upgrade is applied to. And when I found that, I was honestly kind of shocked because I always thought of, like, an idea of just, you know playing through an entire loop with just one weapon, especially, like, the four-pounder, so it's, like, true hand cam potential can just be unleashed. But beyond that, in terms of, like, a new weapon trinket that I thought about, because it'd be a great way to bring back the uh, small hindrance, like, the small minor challenge back into the game, because whenever you get the right build that makes you nigh invincible or overcome like certain loud options and especially with like later progression in the game because you'll get better guns one minor setback that's taken away is the weapon jams i kind of like the weapon jam system where a shitty weapon will jam and you have to fucking repair it i like it, it adds in a little bit of an extra artificial challenge in addition, just, like, hard-as-nails enemies. Because once you can get through those, the environment and, like, other setbacks are the only thing that are going to pull you, like, give you a little bit of extra challenge. And my idea was basically for a weapon trinket called Overpressure Ammo. Arcane Devs, if, if you're listening to this, just please apply it because I think it could be pretty fucking... Well, it'll be broken for stealth. But I'll get into that in a minute. The idea of overpressure ammo is that depending on the rarity, there'll be crude, you know, the, the blue version and the exemplar version. And the idea is, it's, it's in the name, overpressure ammo. Greatly, like for the highest tier, greatly increase your damage, but your weapon will be prone to jamming more frequently. And here's the thing, is that you can apply this to even the exemplar or legendary weapons now of course with the legendary weapons they would have to make some new animations for the weapons well let's say you're just using exemplar weapons obviously the huge benefit with those besides having three weapon trinket slots is they never jam and again i kind of like the whole jamming animation i, I like the animations with the guns in general there's a lot more style and flair to them than most first-person shooters. I'm the guy that would actually challenge himself not to use the reload upgrade, unless it's, like, something that's, like, a devastator of a weapon. Like, a rapier, I would use faster reloads. If it's, like, a fucking full-auto shotgun, I'll use it for that as well. But if it's something like the four-pounder, I kind of, like, try not to use a reload upgrade because I just like the style of the reload. But beyond that, overpressure ammo. I think it would definitely... Add in, like, another layer of challenge. Again, because you're basically reintroducing 
the weapon jamming mechanic with the higher end weapons and with that extra damage you could basically increase the threshold of certain weapons and their effectiveness for example the four pounder back to that gun again um from what i've experienced it's typically a two-shot weapon depending on the distance i always end up using like the slow fire perk for it i, I just got my fucking beauty back again the nickel plated ivory grip four pounder with the uh, slow trigger pull for increased damage. It's one shot capable on the most common enemies in the fucking game. Except visionaries of course. And I always thought to myself. It'd be nice to trade off one particular disadvantage with another. Like I would imagine if I slapped on that weapon trinket over pressure ammo. It would help increase the threshold enough so that it'd be a one shot one kill on a majority of the enemies. And of course you know I'd have the chance of it you know jamming more frequently now this is where like the balancing act kind of gets into play here particularly with the weapon jamming chance because i don't know exactly what the chances are for a weapon jam like in my experience for like the couple of hours that i used the crude weapons they jammed like maybe after 20 or 30 bullets so it was relatively a small chance now of course if you're slapping on a perk that massively increases the damage you deal with each bullet but it confers a larger jam chance it's like you'd have to balance that out because i don't know how that would work especially for rapid fire weapons but i was thinking 50 percent at the highest tier and maybe either a 20 to 25 percent chance of weapon jamming it sounds like a lot but if you're cycling through the weapons or there's not that en that many enemies fucking you up, I think the weapon jamming would be a small inconvenience in favor of the massive damage potential. Even though there's plenty of fucking weapons that could just fuck shit up. Like, I just got the fucking explosive rapier and Jesus, fuck man. That weapon should not exist. But, um... Yeah, beyond that, I mean, I'm kind of impressed that there was actually, like, double weapon trinkets, given, like, I saw, like, a small sheet on, like, a scene guide, and it's nothing really that spectacular. Like, again, like, they knew they had to balance this shit out, because it'd be completely unfair to, like, online players, so it's, like, the best one that I found was the a double accuracy upgrade. Like, accuracy of aim shots is better, and the distance at which your guns are accurate is improved, which could be very handy if you're trying to take some shots from long range. But, I mean, when the majority of your weapons are mainly just using, like, firing rate increases and possibly reload upgrades, if you want to skip the reload animation, it's like, that's not really that substantial, now, of course, I was lucky enough that off of Frank, I think, I was able to get the uh, weapon swap speed and reload speed upgrade. But I only had that on, like, the limp with the uh, vampire perk, just so I can recover as much health as I can while I damage enemies. But beyond that, I mean, what else can I fucking talk about? I don't want to just be one mini what if with overpressure ammo. There's obviously way more shit here. Oh, yeah. New melee weapons. J just a small minor thing. Like, the machete's cool and all, but I like to think there's, like, more varied weapons that you can probably, like, equip for Colt. Especially if they went a little bit more in-depth with the melee system. Where, like, heavier weapons are a little bit slower. Or bludgeoning weapons can, like, stun the enemy easier. But it takes a little bit longer to kill them and all that shit. But given, considering how simplistic the melee combat is, it's like two swipes and they're dead. So I guess the only reason why I'd want more melee weapons is just so I can have like a different cosmetic effect. The weeb in me says, give me a Japanese Tonto. Please. I, I, would, I would love to roam around Black Reef with a fucking katana. As do a lot of others, no doubt. Oh, Oh, and similar to the overpressure ammo, you could kind of do this as well. Because there, there's there's the box ammo types, right? Where it increases your ammo. As much as it would probably fuck us over in the long run, maybe add in a weapon trinket where maybe it'll reduce the overall ammo you have, but you'll have bigger 
bullets, like Magnum ammunition somehow, maybe. And given if that if the, both of those trinkets were to exist, that would actually be kind of fucked up, because I'm just thinking in my head, imagine you just stack, like, three weapon buffs on a weapon. Like, yeah, you have, like, very few rounds, your gun will jam a fuck ton, and that's the only gun you can use, but, like, imagine the damage potential. I'd, re I'd reckon a, uh, tribunal at that point would just one shot one kill everyone at that point but that's the thing it's like it's those type of builds that would be particularly interesting but going back to the overpressure ammo and like damage increases in particular there is one disadvantage and that the simple fact that it breaks stealth so much more because i'm just thinking either with the silenced limp or the or the or the silence tribunal. If you just stack on a couple of damage buffs from either like overpressure ammo or magnum ammo trinkets, or the um, running on empty, I think that's the the trinket I picked up from Fist Hand Rock. Obviously, you won't even have to worry about headshots. Just aim for the fucking torso, end them in one shot. And if you use, like, the Aether ability to just make yourself invisible, you can just clear an entire map without being discovered once. So that would be kind of busted. But I'm just talking about in terms of, like, a loud person. I think the, um, the overpressure ammo could be very fucking cool, especially if there's, like, a cool visual effect, like more flash from the barrel or some shit. Maybe the gun will overheat a little bit more. It would just be kind of cool. And again... Besides just breaking the fucking combat because your guns will do ludicrous more damage, it would just be nice to bring back those weapon jams. That's all. But, shit, 12 minutes for just talking about one fucking trinket here and rambling. That's another video for fucking Deathloop because I'm just gushing over this mediocre game that just still has a place in my heart for some reason. Um, I don't know. YouTube chant. Blah, 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 and blah. Let me know what type of trinkets you guys would want. Um, yeah, especially, like, ideas, you know? Like, the the, 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 like, the amount of trinkets and abilities you could put in something like Deathloop would be endless. But, again, I know there's, like, some sort of, like, balancing you have to take in consideration, especially, like, going up against Juliana's, but... They're able to add in, like, a limit. Like, if you decide to fuck around with the accessibility options, okay, you gotta play the game strictly single-player. Do the same thing. If you're using a particular trinket that's too overpowered, you know, then fuck it. Just switch it up. But, I mean, I'd reckon not a whole lot of play people are playing Juliana. I mean, obviously until, you know, they get to max level to get all the skins for Colt, which I still think there should be an alternative way to get those skins... And then that's it. It's over. They're, they're on to the AI Trion, which, I won't lie, there were a couple times that Julian did fuck me over for an AI. Bitch is smart. But, that's all for now. Keep breaking some loop, guys. Stay safe. Toodaloo!